In this video, we will continue to work with tables and go through how to create calculated fields. Calculated fields allows us to create more matrix for analyzing our data. So I'll be going through some simple examples. To create a calculated field, we can click on the data pane here and select create calculated field. We will then see a pop-up where we can name the field and input our formula here. So let's start with something simple, a simple arithmetic calculation. Let's say we are interested to know the expense. So in this data, we have sales and profit information. So from this two, we can derive our expense. So we have sales minus the profit. And there we have our expense. So usually this wouldn't be the calculation that we would do. We would probably have the expense data and derive the profit from the sales and expense. But just as an example, we will calculate the expense. Here beside the icon, we actually now see a equal sign. So what this means is that it represents that this is a calculated field. So now we have the sales, we have the expense, and we have the profit. So next, let's create a conditional calculation, which is an if-else statement. So we do the same thing here. And now let's try to create a categorical data. So now let's say in this case, we want to categorize our orders into large or small orders. So let's do a simplified example. Here, yeah, this might not be really meaningful in this data because we might actually want to think about the type of products we are actually looking at. So let's call this orders size. Okay, so let's just put a random number. Let's say if it is more than $1,000, we will call it as a large order. Right, so let's do if sales is more than 1000, then we have large order. Else, it is a small order. And we have to end the statement. So now here, what we have done is that we have created a categorical data. So here, we can drag this here, and we have the grouping of large or small orders here. So another important thing to take note is how Tableau reads the formula. When we say that if sales is more than 1000, what it means is that it's reading it at the row level. For this particular row of data, we will we will see if this sales is greater than 1,000 and we categorize it under large order. Now what happens if that we do an aggregation on this formula? So here, we see that now we only see large order. We don't see the small orders anymore. Why is this happening? This is happening because what we are doing here instead is that we are performing an aggregation on all the rows first and then we go through the condition whether it is more than $1,000. So obviously, the sum of all the data would definitely be more than $1,000. So that's why we see that we only see large order. So let's take, put in more granular data and see how it looks like. So let's now put in product name. Now at this level, what we are seeing is that it will take the sum or aggregation at the product name level and then it decides whether it's a large or small order. Okay, let's look at it at an even more granular level to better understand this. 
So let's go all the way down to the order ID level. So now what happens is that now you see that okay let's go back one step now this 1.7 cubic foot compact blah 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 is actually categorized as a large order why because at this level the aggregated sales is more than one thousand dollar now let's drag in the order id which is the most granular level in this data now what we see is that this orders under this 1.7 cubic foot compact refrigerator uh, has this has all these orders and the calculation is now done on the order ID level where we do a sum at this particular level and check the condition so whether it is when it's more than 1000 it's a large order when it's less than 1000 it is a small order so now let's go back one step again. So now if we remove order ID, what happens is that this formula here, the order size, is aggregated on the level of product name. So we see that this sales aggregated is at this level and we get a large order. So now let's go through another example to see which is the best selling product. So one way to present this information is to rank them. So now let's create another calculated view. So here we want to be able to rank the top 10 products. Let's define top 10 products by saying that they are the best selling, which means that it's based on how many uh, of these products we have sold. So we might want to look at the rank by quantity. So let's name this rank by quantity. So a rank has to be done on a aggregation level. So that's why we have put a sum in front of this quantity. Okay, now let's bring in this rank. So let's change this to discrete value. And we can drag this to the front. And now let's put in the quantity to take a look at the rank. So you see that the products now are ranked based on the quantity that has been sold. So over here, you will notice that there is a triangle. So what this means is that this view is performing a table or a window calculation. So on this table, we can see that certain products have the same rank. So by default, Tableau's calcula rank calculation will take similar value as the same rank. We can change this setting by changing our calculation. So in this calculation, if we click on this, and the window here actually tells us what this formula does. So what it says here is that identical values are assigned an identical rank. So in this example here, we can see that we have 6, 9, 9, and 14 value. This is ranked as 1, 2, 2, and then it skips to 4. Then let's take a look at how it actually looks like in our table here. We see that here we have 5, 6, and then it skips to 8, which is what the default rank is actually doing. Okay, now let's apply the rank dense formula, and we can take a look at how this actually looks like. fix this um, yep there we go so now we see there is a running number here we have it goes six and then to seven we can use this rank as a filter so let's say here we actually want to do a top 10 selling products So what we want to do is actually create a filter. So we can click on control and drag this here. 
Okay, now we might want to change this to a continuous instead so that we can have a range to select. So we might want to do at most 10. Now we have the top 10 best selling products. So here we have also taken a brief look at how we can use filters. And in next video, we will go through more on filters and an alternate way of showing rank information with filters.